jealous of you because yeah as you would expect i didn't have my lunch and it's like it's like really sad i feel really hungry now but but i'm jealous of this guy too because he had a good breakfast so uh welcome to our talk our talk is on api pen testing so if you are aware of what are restful api services and if you're a developer slash pen tester slash application security engineer slash devops devops engineer this pro this talk might just be relevant to what you do at your work uh before before i go ahead just want a quick poll uh how many of you here do pen testing nice uh how many of you are like developers here nice how many of you develop code in ruby on rails one two three four five okay that's probably going to be easy slash hard for you lalit but that's okay cool so our talk is on automating api pen testing using fazapi fazapi is our tool name uh and as the as the tagline says it's probably just another tool that's going to help you to do penetration testing or write some secure code so about us uh i'm abhijit dugnapadi just just a long name really long name uh i i work i work as an application security consultant in sydney australia and yes it, i did have a long flight last sunday but that's okay please please i'm i'm absolutely okay with it uh and i work uh i like i like training i like spreading awareness about uh, security and uh, application security penetration testing and stuff like that and yeah i do a lot of bug bounties and uh, it's always nice to find bugs on the internet and uh, find bugs on production websites because because if you are doing penetration testing on dev slash test boxes it's probably a little easier for you to find vulnerabilities but when you're actually testing websites which are on production which are live which are already pen tested and when you find vulnerabilities in website like that it's always fun and it's always a, a great pleasure uh, our, our our other team member srinivas is unfortunately not here because of various reasons but yeah he is also uh, an author for this book called hacking on right hacking android you should probably check it out uh and this is lalit uh do you want to tell about yourself oh no i'm going to tell about him so he works as a developer intern at uh, shopify he's a blogger he's a coder uh and he's a ruby on rails enthusiast so you would have understood by now that our tool for zappy is built on ruby on rails it's all because of this guy that i had to learn ruby on rails but it's it's a really cool language and we'll probably go ahead and talk more about for zappy next slide so yeah just a quick disclaimer do i begin the talk all the opinions all all the opinions are not just mine few of them belong to my other team members but nobody else is responsible so if there is anything you want to rant about please tweet tweet it to just to all three of us and not anyone else please uh for the next 45 minutes we are going to talk about next slide cats because we all love cats and there's I, i'm sure most of you would wake up early in the morning open your ready tap search for cat pics and then go and brush your teeth that's how most of us do yeah and uh, next slide and yeah so since we since we love cats garfield is our favorite cartoon so i'm going to talk about garfield cartoon and then probably going to give you a heads up of who made who made that initial design and i'm also going to tell you why he has a big tummy and what are the ingredients that he uses in the food next slide uh yeah so this is what this is what we do early uh, every day in the morning Yeah I I think I'll take this cuz it's easier for me. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, on a serious note, we are going to talk about fuzzing REST APIs and why we came up this uh, came up with this idea of having a REST API fuzzer. Uh and yeah, we we would also probably talk about how this tool helps a developer slash pen tester because because when you take every tool very uh, every open source automated tool outside in the market it might help developer in a different way it might help a pen tester in a different way but the end motto is always same uh, and we also going to probably talk about uh, how can you do a continuous integration using this tool uh, in your in your agile sec agile security stls here uh yeah so for zappy it's a uh, as the name says uh, we are interested in your rest apis if you give us your rest api uh, request as an input we would fuzz it fuzz fuzz around uh, various parameters slash headers in your rest api and then we would give you a bunch of results uh, and it's the best part about this is it's just like it's just like your rest client that you have in your chrome or firefox so all you have to do is install this on your computer have it on one of your tab 
create create your REST API, just give it as an input, and just go have some coffee and come back, and by the time you complete your coffee, it will give you a bunch of results saying there are XYZ uh, types of vulnerabilities in this application. Uh, it does cover most of the top attacks that you commonly see in REST APIs, but I wouldn't want to say that it's 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 the best tool or it's one of the coolest tool or stuff like that. It does cover a few top attacks. It does cover a few basic attacks that you commonly see, which which I'll probably talk about uh, in the next slide. Yeah, so if if you're talking about REST API penetration testing, these are probably the most common things that you would generally find, right? Vulnerabilities related to authorization, vulnerabilities related to authentication, or probably input validation vulnerabilities and stuff like that. So after after doing pen testing for about four to five years and seeing a lot of common patterns in REST APIs, we thought we thought it would be really cool if we could automate this. And yes, just like all of you all, we love bugs. So I thought before I talk more about REST APIs, I'll I'll, I'll just give you a brief idea about how REST APIs uh, vulnerabilities look like. For which one of my first examples is Twitter. Uh, I have a friend called Akhil Reddy who probably found this vulnerability, I think, one and a half years back. So basically what this vulnerability does is, in Twitter there is something called as a direct message. So when you send a direct message to someone and delete it, obviously the whole point of having a delete functionality to your direct message is you would not be able to, uh, you will not be able to see the direct message after it's deleted, right? But using this, this particular vulnerability, oh shit, okay, using, <laughs> Yeah, that's how it is, computers. That's why I hate computers. But yeah, using this particular vulnerability, what the attacker could do is he can delete your direct message, but because because the message, uh, because the response that comes from your REST API is still getting stored, even after you, you delete your direct message from your application slash the website, you can just send the API through, through a client or burp repeater, and the message will still exist in your in your response. So, so this is a simple vulnerability which, which which these guys have found. And uh, this is another vulnerability which is which is found by Pranav, I guess four to five months back. This is on Facebook, so what basically uh, you could do is you could add a comment on a Facebook video and you can delete the comment and you could use a you could use you could use one of their APIs and you can use the co uh, comment ID. All you had to do was delete slash comment ID and pass it and it would automatically delete someone else's comment, which is which is a bit strange slash sad because in the modern era you wouldn't want to see uh, just by for vulnerabilities where you just change ID value of something and something gets deleted. But yeah, even in 2016 would we do see bugs like this and after seeing vulnerabilities like this, we, we had a thought saying, hey guys, this looks really interesting. So can we automate such stuff? Because, because when we have automated when we have successfully uh, automated most of the OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities in web applications slash mobile applications, we thought, can we also go ahead and try automating REST API, REST API vulnerabilities? And the answer was maybe. And the whole point is, why do you want to automate? Because we don't have time, right? If you are a penetration tester, you get like six to seven uh, APIs to test in like half a day, and all you have to do is take the API, use it on one of your REST line, change each and every parameter, get the response, understand the response, and see if it matches your pattern or something like that, and find vulnerabilities. And after you find a vulnerability, the moment you send it to a developer, it depends if they have, if they want to fix it or not. You have you a have lot of reasons like, is this a critical vulnerability? Does the business want to accept this as a vulnerability? Do you want to fix it in test slash? Or do you want to fix it in production, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So people have their own reasons whether or not they want to fix a vulnerability now or whether they want to fix it in the future. So people don't have time. So we thought it's always nice to automate stuff. And continuous integration. How many of you here do continuous integration at your organization? One, two, three, four, five, six. Thank you. Because, because we believe there are organizations which, which deploy code into production greater than 10 times a day. Uh, I, was, I was reading some stats on some blog a uh, couple of weeks back, and it said we might reach a position where you do 100 to 200 code deployments on production every single day. And I'm sure a few organizations sitting here might be doing it right now too. So when you're doing continuous integration, you cannot, have, you cannot expect your pen tester to 
you know, be available with you all the time and you cannot expect him to test stuff before it goes to production. So what you would do, you would rather ask him to test stuff in production. But imagine if you are doing more than 10 releases every single day, how much effort it would be to, for the pen tester to go ahead and test every single API. And especially if for, for most of you who do REST API pen testing, you would know it's a tedious process for you to check and fuzz each and every parameter, get the response, understand the response, and find vulnerabilities. So this is, this is a, a very strong reason behind why we thought of automating few of the common tests. And again, it's, it's always cool for a developer to test his own code before sending it to production, uh, before sending it to a pen tester, right? So if a developer can set, test his own code and then uh, send it to the pen tester, it's always, it's always a better pro there's always a better probability that there might be less number of vulnerabilities because these automated tools can probably check off maybe maybe 30 to 40 percent of your low hanging fruits. Uh, with this with this thought, we thought of writing this uh, API fuzzer. Again, the point is, I'm not saying the penetration testing can be automated because I'm, I'm personally being a penetration tester. I'm a firm firm believer of the fact that the whole concept of penetration testing cannot be completely automated because it doesn't just involve our technical skills. It's our technical plus analytical skills which involve uh, in finding vulnerabilities. And though you have tools, though they have, you, you call them pen testing robots, it's really hard for them to find all the vulnerabilities that a pen tester finds. So we are not saying that everything can be automated, but when I just ran a simple poll on uh, Twitter and asked a few of my friends how many of them, what is the percentage of vulnerabilities that people think can be automated? Then the answer was maybe around 25 or 25 to 40%. So imagine if you could automate 25% of your tasks or tests that you do while you write your code, that itself is a big win. So this is some cool stuff that Fasapi can find. It can find some vulnerabilities which are related to access control violations, privilege escalations, XXE, uh, how many of you here have exploited XXE in the past six to seven months? Cool. You might you might love this feature because it's gonna it's gonna probably save a lot of time for you, uh, and also rate limiting uh, vulnerabilities related to rate limiting and yeah regular vulnerabilities which are which are like cross site scripting or SQL injection. Not so cool stuff about Fuzzapi. It's hard for you to install Fuzzapi on your machine. I know nobody would tell this, but I'm just being very frank with you guys because it has a lot of dependencies and it might it might probably ask take like six or seven steps for you to download various dependencies and uh, have it on your computer we are trying to make this as simple as possible uh, and maybe lalit will talk about how you can also install this simply on your computer but th but then yeah it this is this is not so cool stuff about fazapi which are, which we are currently trying to solve uh, yeah, sure, why not? Uh, we'll probably give you a quick demo of Fuzzapi and how it looks like. Uh, how many of you here know DVWS? Yeah, yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a damn vulnerable web services application. So if you want to practice uh, web services penetration testing, this is probably one of the applications that you can go ahead and try. And as you would expect, just like every other talk, I am taking an example of a vulnerable application to give a demonstration of my tool because that has been the legacy, and that's been the easiest way demo gods are in our favor. So please, I, I, I would like to apologize if you don't like it, but then yeah. So this is a, this is a vulnerability called as XXE. Uh, do you want to show them how DVWS looks like? Oh, it's here. So for people who do not know about damn vulnerable web services, please go to Google and type damn vulnerable web services. It'll, it, it'll give you uh, it'll give you a result and probably the first result will give you the give you the link just download it run it on your local host this is how it looks like and it's a it's a pretty cool application which where you can practice vulnerabilities which are related to uh, web services and it also has pretty cool attacks with respect to rest apis so yeah if, if you're new to api penetration testing and if you want to learn more this is probably one of the applications that i can i can probably recommend so there is an attack called as XML ex external entity injection. Yeah, there are two two types of external uh, entity injection, external entity injection too. So we are probably gonna take this attack and try to fuzz this request. So this is how Fuzzapi looks like. Pretty simple. You just have to download it from GitHub. Takes takes about 
30 to 40 minutes for you to install this on your computer, depending on your internet speed. And then you would just have to type localhost colon 3000. And uh, and one one cool thing that we did yesterday was, till yesterday we did not have any sign up functionality on this application, but then we thought if you would want to have this on your on one of your servers and if you would want to share the public IP address and then run it across your organization, we thought it would be nice if there are sign-ins. So we have created a sign-up functionality. So when you first open the app, you might it might ask for you to sign up. So you can just sign up and then quickly uh, sign in. This is what it looks like. It will ask you for a URL. It will ask you what type of method it is. It will ask you for raw headers. Uh, we, we used the concept of raw headers because I know most of you would be using Zap or Burp Suite, so it will be just easier for you to intercept a request on Zap or Burp Suite, just copy it and paste it on this on this particular tool, and you would have to just click on scan. And uh, yeah, just go for a walk or try to get some water or coffee. It will probably take like 120 to 240 seconds for it to complete a scan. Uh, yeah, so we, we, we probably ran like 72 test scans since last night because we didn't want to screw up during the talk, but but then luckily, fingers crossed. Oh, yeah, cool. I uh, have a possible XXE vulnerability in this particular uh, particular application in the particular URL, uh, and it does also give you a details. It does give you a fancy fly chart, a flow chart because, uh, because most of... Most of you might like numbers, so if you like numbers, you can use the flowchart. And you can scroll down. It'll also give you a few other vulnerabilities, say there is a information disclosure saying server version is being disclosed, or, or, or you can see what version of PHP it uses. These are some information vulnerabilities which are also, which, which also are being tested by Fazapi. It also tells you that there is a possible IDOR in this particular request. IDOR is nothing but insecure diet object reference. Uh, now, just to give you a heads up, uh, okay, it also gives you that there is no API rate limiting for this. Now, we rated the rate limiting as low, but I'm sure these risk uh, rating might vary from company to company and organization to organization. So, please don't, uh, you know, technically rely on this. You can probably customize it, which which Lalit will uh, show you going going forward. So, this, this is how it looks like. Just give it, uh, just, just run a scan, and it'll give you some bunch of results. Uh, and one, pause, one uh, important thing that I would like to tell you is, for Fazapi to run, you have to give a valid request. So, for the whole, uh, I mean, Fazapi works based on the regex uh, reg matching from the response. So, if you don't give a valid request, if you give an invalid request, which will probably give you a 403 or 404, then there's no point running Fazapi because it is running all the checks against an invalid request or a 404 or a 403. You know what I mean? So. It is always suggested for you to give a valid request so that Fazapi works properly. If Fazapi is not working properly, then then there's a high probability that the request or, or token or one of the headers is not valid. So, so this is how it looks. If you can just scroll up, you can click on scans. And scans will give you a history of all the scans that you have run. Uh, and if you can click any of any of those scans, yeah, uh, it'll again show you, uh, it'll also give you results from the previous scan. So, so one unfortunate thing is there is an insecure direct object reference in this, in our application. If you see the number on the URL, which is scans, scans slash 32, if you change it to scans slash, slash 33, it'll work. And if you change it to, okay, I'll, I'm not going to talk more, but then yeah, please don't pen test our application. It's, it's a, it's a really small open source tool. So please, please forgive us for having these vulnerabilities in our application. But then, uh, but then, yeah, this is how it looks like. If you can just go back, go back, Lalit, or do you want to go to the slides? No, I just want like, you to go back. So one, another thing that we uh, did with Fazapi is, uh, you're going to talk about the architecture. I completely forgot. Okay, cool. Uh, another thing that we did about Fazapi is, it has something called a Sidekick. For people who use Ruby, Ruby on Rails, you might be knowing about Sidekick. So what Sidekick does is, it shows you what are the scans which are in the queue, or it shows you what are the scans which are completed, or it will also give you an idea about what are the failed scans. So this is helping you in, stat, uh, in running statistics. And another thing that we did was we, we used another plugin. If you have internet connection, and if you have any error while running Fazapi, an, an issue will be automatically created in GitHub. So what happens is we would immediately get notified, and I'm definitely sure we would get spammed over the next weekend, and we are ready for it, fortunately or unfortunately. But then, yeah, so so 
the good part is if there is any major issue, we would come to know immediately and we will try to solve the issue as soon as possible. If not, there's always a case where you can probably tweet or create an issue on GitHub. Uh, do you want to go to the, go back to the slides? Yeah, so, so this is a very brief uh, working model of how Fuzzapi works. Uh, can you go to the next slide? So after, after you have seen how the tool, how the puzzle basically works, we want to give you an idea of how stuff basically works and how we have developed the application. And uh, Lalit, do you want to talk? Yeah, sure. No, you don't, you don't want to talk? Uh, I need 100 bucks for talking. 100 bucks? No. <laughs> this is a problem with bug hunters. Please, uh, can you please? OK, thanks. OK, uh, so Fuzzapi for, for runs on API Fuzzer gem. Uh, so it, it basically has uh, two individual components. One is the Ruby gem, and other is the Rails application. So Ruby gem is a simple uh, wrap-up architecture which I followed, uh, so that you can easily integrate with uh, any other Ruby applications. Can you tell me what's a Ruby gem? Oh yeah. Uh, so a Ruby gem is a simple uh, library uh, which has a set of dependencies, and you can actually use it as a command line tool, and also integrate with the web applications. Uh, so. Let's go into the deep dive. Um, so here, here, this is how it looks. Uh, you give a valid request to the Fuzzapi. It just uh, use a sidekick uh, to process a request, and it stores in the Redis. Uh, once the queue is empty, the job gets popped off, and then the API fuzzer comes into the picture, uh, and then it just runs the scans, all the checks on that particular request, and just so stores the results in the MySQL database. Uh, it's, it's pretty simple architecture. Um, so, okay. Uh, so let, let's let's go to the how the structure of the Ruby gem works and uh, how the Fuzz API works. And, and and this is especially for all the developers who are here because because when I initially wanted to learn Ruby, I thought it would be really difficult. But after after uh, he gave me a simple walkthrough of the code, I, I I'm telling you it's like really easy, and you could probably download the gem in your local computer and you can start playing around with it. And I'm sure you'll definitely love it. Okay. Uh, so uh, the the basic file structure is uh, all the code lives in the API fuzzer folder. Uh, all the checks and everything run from there, uh, and the call runs from the API fuzzer main file. So in this file, you get all the checks loaded and then just e scan every check. So the common thing is a, every uh, check has some boilerplate here. Uh, so it has a scan static method and the options hash. So what does options hash contain? It contains all, all the data um, regarding the request, uh, typically URL parameters, uh, and also the headers, cookies, if you like. Um, and then it just returns the vulnerabilities uh, if in each check uh, and just throws through the application. Uh, let's let's go uh, take a single check. So so this is how it looks like. Um, it it just has a vulnerability class. Uh, you can actually customize it uh, based on the severity uh, and also the attributes you want to list uh, in a vulnerability. Then it has a request module uh, to ping the API continuously. Uh, then uh, it has a static method through which we access the data, uh, typically headers, cookies, and URL. And then we first each and every parameter. The best part is uh, it fuzzes each and every parameter. If you, if you take the URL, even the query string, or even the slash URL as well. So it treats every uh, part fragment as a parameter and runs the API scan on that particular parameter. And it, it just gives you a bunch of uh, vulnerabilities in each scan. And finally, we get the whole list of vulnerabilities of all scans. Uh, the next thing is uh, about the rules. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we just added uh, a little, little small feature. I would say um, like it, it just uh, has all the data about the response as well, headers, etc. So you, if, if you have something interesting in your headers that you want to flag every time, you will actually define a rule here. Uh, just give it a description name, and uh, the match is a simple regular expression. So whenever your scan is running on that particular rule, uh, it just flags if, if that matches that particular regular expression. That would be uh, really good for uh, if you have something like server versions disclose or, or any 
uh, insecure information in the, in the headers. Uh, so, uh, yeah. But uh, the one, pos one unfortunate thing is it will, it will create a lot of noise because uh, I see a lot of applications, especially in the death slash test environment, where you deliberately disclose these details because because uh, you would want the other developers to know. But but I I'm not sure if you would want to do it in production. So it depends from organization to organization and company to company. So if you feel this tool creates a lot of noise, you can easily go to the code base and probably remove the check and it will not find the vulnerability in the future. Okay. Uh, so I'll just go through the how XXC check works here. Uh, so it, it, XXC check uh, basically uh, runs a payload uh, and attaches it to the body of the XML. Uh, the XML then pings the local server. So it's, it's typically like you have a local server sitting and the XXC check on, runs on your local server. It just pings, re-pings your endpoint, certain endpoint. Uh, so whenever that particular endpoint is hitting, uh, you just uh, save the vulnerability details into the database. Uh, so it's, it's a pretty, pretty uh, neat idea, which I found. Um, and we are trying to extend this to SSRF uh, vulnerability as well. Uh, yeah, we did, we did try a lot to have SSRF, which worked initially, but after which, to be very frank, we, we were not able to have a successful POC. That's the reason we removed that check. But we would, we would probably, that's, that's, our, that's in our roadmap, and we would definitely add SSRF as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, so, so this is how uh, the API gem works, API fuzzer works. Uh, let, let's. Okay. Uh, so yeah. uh, I think we forgot to show accessing slash etc slash password using X XXE, but that's okay. Uh, yeah. You go ahead. I'll not stop you. Uh, so first API is a Rails application. It, it would be really uh, difficult for you to test your each and every API request, uh, write a simple Ruby script, which runs uh, the gem, particular gem. So it, be, it would be really good to integrate that with the UI so that you can directly copy paste the request data uh, and just get the response uh, with the vulnerabilities listed. So uh, we use a Ruby on Rails application, Ruby on Rails framework. Uh, and just to make sense, uh, it, it, it's pretty simple. Uh, it, it just follows uh, MVC pattern. And you have... Uh, workers, uh, which are like the vulnerability workers. Uh, so whenever a scan is being processed, it just goes through a worker, and that particular process gets into a queue. And whenever the queue is free, that particular process will be pulled out, and the job will be continue to run that particular scan. Uh, I just want to show this, this uh, uh, process, how it works. And yeah. So, so let's. let's uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I would definitely love to see a slash etc slash password or whatever. So, so uh, if you remember, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Uh, so this is the endpoint we tested previously. Uh, so it has an XML uh, entity vulnerability. So let's just see uh, if we can ripping the etc slash password. Uh, yeah. So it, it, it just uh, works perfectly. And yeah, back to slides. So there is a reason why we are stressing more about XXE, because because uh, when we initially did the presentation probably a couple of weeks back, we had more POCs toward access control violation. But it's it's just last week when uh, Lalit was doing a private bounty, he found a very good cross site. Uh, I mean XXE, and the best part was it was not one two. He actually found like six XXE in an application which could give him uh, out of which I think. Uh, he could get etc slash password, which was like really cool. That's and that was found using Fuzz API. So that's 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 a pinch of satisfaction that we have. Uh, you know, after you write an entire fuzzer when you're testing an application in the production and when you find a really cool vulnerability, that's that's when you really feel happy. And yeah, that's the reason for concentrating more on XXE rather than other vulnerabilities. But go ahead, sorry. Uh, so so this is a typical. Flow for XXE vulnerability. We just ping the local URL and get confirm uh, if there is a confirm status. Okay, uh, we just uh, create a vulnerability for that particular scan. So yeah, uh, we use a similar approach for privilege escalation. Uh, most of the time, uh, particular integer is being used for each and every uh, parameter to uniquely identify that particular resource. So. So if that particular uh, ID is being incremented and we are able to access uh, other users' data, that would lead to some sort of privilege escalation. So 
So we thought to automate this process, and we just uh, use the same approach here as well. And as I understand, most of the applications nowadays use random tokens slash hashes instead of direct numbers because it is probably easier for someone to attack it. But we still find a lot of vulnerabilities where people change an ID value or an account ID value or something like that and still can do privilege escalation. I'm sure for a lot of pen testers sitting here, you would have seen such vulnerabilities in the recent past too. So that's the reason, though this might sound really basic, we did add, add this check because because you, instead of fuzzing every single parameter in the request, it will do its job and it will give you a result and you can save a lot of time. Uh, next one is a rate limiting. Uh, every API certainly should have some sort of rate, rate limiting. It could be critical if that particular endpoint is really sensitive. Uh, something like if, if that particular endpoint really stores the credit card data or makes a checkout transaction. Uh, so Not credit card data. Banks are really safe now. Please, <laughs> please stop saying credit okay. card data. Uh -huh. So yeah, uh, so fuzz happy uh, approach for rate limiting. It just uh, iterates uh, through particular limit and just uh, sees the interesting pattern in the response. If, if the interesting pattern response matches, uh, so we just flag that particular uh, API as uh, vulnerable to API rate limiting. So uh, next one is Docker. Uh, so Abjit was saying th there was a lot of dependencies uh, so we thought to use Docker uh, so that uh, we could simplify the process to just running two commands. Uh, one, the first step would be to just install your Docker in your local machine and just clone the app uh, in your local machine. Just go to that directory, uh, run Docker Compose build, which builds the image for your, uh, the API fuzzer as well as the uh, Ruby, uh, Ruby application. Uh, then Docker Compose app would just start the Rails app server as well as the background processes so that you, you can just go and visit the application directly. How many of you here know Docker? Thanks. That, that, that makes life a lot easier because if you have Docker on your computer, it's, you can just run for Zappy using two simple steps. So if, if you don't have Docker on your computer, it might take a little, little bit of time because you would have to install a lot of dependencies, but it has, Docker has made our life easier. Uh, next one is uh, we are using uh, each and every single API here. It, it would be really a pain to copy paste uh, each and every API. So we thought to automate this one as well. So one approach would be to use continuous integration uh, where we run a certain amount of tests and each test runs on particular endpoint. So we have the request data there. Uh, so if we are able to intercept that particular request and just process that to API fuzzle jam, then it would uh, create some sort of vulnerabilities and we could get that uh, through some sort of API. So I just, uh, found this one through Rails application. Uh, I, I worked a bit with Rails. Uh, so this is how, uh, it, this is a simple approach uh, for a Rails app, uh, just to integrate your test suite entirely with uh, the fuzzy API, fuzz API. Uh, uh, so it, um, it just has uh, a get method. Uh, it, Rails has uh, individual methods listed for each test case. Uh, so it get post, I just took get and post here. Uh, if you can able to do monkey pass that particular request, uh, method and just get the response there uh, and the request as well, you could pass that to Fuzz API and just you know uh, create a dashboard and just uh, get the scan reports for each and every commit you make to that particular repository. Uh, and what about Jenkins? Because most of us use Jenkins. Yeah, uh, I, I think uh, even Jenkins have some sort of uh, monkey patching. So uh, I mean, I, I just work with Rails, so, so I found this one easy. Uh, even uh, there are ways for Jenkins as well. Yeah, so the whole point is it will probably be a bit of task for you to go back and see how you can integrate into your build pipeline because every organization has different build pipelines and you might follow a different methodologies uh, from what we do. But if, if you need some assistance, then you can always drop us an email and we'll try to see. Yeah, uh, so next one. Yeah, you are the developer, I'm not the developer. So uh, it's, it's the job uh, of the developer, uh, like not to test uh, the entire API. So continuous integration would really help the developer uh, just get the code and run it and just get the results of uh, the vulnerabilities and just fix them. So the job of the security engineer is real, so you should probably. Yeah, so uh, like I told you, there are, there are two ways you can look into this too. One as a developer, one as a penetration tester. So if you're a developer, like Lalit mentioned, you can quickly integrate this into your build pipeline and see if uh, 
you can run tests against all your APIs and get results from it, and then start fixing vulnerabilities even uh, stuff goes to pen tester. And as a security engineer, uh, I'm talking more in terms of an application security engineer rather than being a penetration tester. So if I'm an application security engineer, it would probably be my duty to work with the developers, sit with them, and help them understand in, in the type of vulnerabilities that Fuzzapi gives, because there is a there is a very good probability that not all developers might be aware of few access control vulnerabilities or vulnerabilities like XXE. So it would be my duty to initially sit with the developer, help them integrate this into uh, into their build pipeline. Uh, but if I'm a penetration tester, this is this is like a very cool tool for me, right? Because if I have to run, uh, if you have to test like multiple APIs, I don't have to fuzz in every single parameter using a client. I can just use this tool, and it'll give me most of the low-hanging fruits, and it'll save probably three to four hours of my time, and I can invest that three to four hours of my time in playing Pokemon Go, which is really cool. So, so this is this is how this is how you can use this tool for multiple purposes. Uh, uh, and again, and again, uh, again, if I'm an application security engineer, there are a few organizations where application security engineers actually go ahead and do uh, integra integration of security tools into uh, in their uh, in their build cycle. But with few organizations, I think developers do it. So depending from organization to organization, you can adopt this tool and make uh, make it work for you. Yeah. Oh yeah, and this is this is a very cool tweet which I found some time back. This guy says. The most successful security teams build their own tools, which which is considered to be a fact. But again, the whole point is if if you're not in a position or if you don't have time to build your own tool, then there are always open source tools available in the market which you can probably download and start customizing according to your organization needs. And yeah, the, ro the roadmap that we have for Fuzzapi is pretty straightforward. We want to add more and more checks. We want to write more blocks so that it will be easier for you to install stuff, like like I mentioned, probably with Jenkins or probably with TeamCity and stuff like that. Uh, we want to make more tutorial videos because it might be easier for you to follow videos because I personally like videos more than blocks. So we want to probably uh, release more videos and also release a few proof of concepts of vulnerabilities that we have found if they're not private bounties, if they're public bounties. And yeah, we probably want to write more tools like for Zappy and then repeat everything that we do because that's that's infosec right infosec is not a 9 to 6 job so yeah so this is again a classification that i want to give for three types of organizations small organization medium sized organization and large organization if you have a, if you are a small organization i understand that most of you might not have budget for security testing then Open source tools like this must, might, might be a very cool idea because if you're using open source tools for security testing, you can you can probably wash out few of the few of the low hanging fruits and make sure that your your code is at least a bit secure. And imagine if you invest two thousand dollars every every week on penetration testing, and if you send it to an external vendor, you don't have to send it every week. You can send it once in a fortnight or once in four weeks. If you start adopting open source tools and start running these tools in your in your organization, this will save you a lot of budget. If you're a medium scale organization, I expect you to have an internal penetration testing team. And since you're a medium scale organization, you might also do an external penetration testing. Then it's a really cool idea for your penetration testers to use open source tools and then save a lot of time. And then you can ask the penetration testers to sit with the developers and save some time for the developers. Because as we all understand, it is easier for us to fix vulnerabilities sooner than later. Because if you are asked to fix a vulnerability in production, it's like really hard. And for most of you who do API penetration testing, if you find vulnerabilities in an API, say an access control vulnerability or an insecure direct object reference, it does take a lot of time for a developer to fix it. It's 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 not a cross-site scripting where you go and do a HTML encoding and the parameter is getting fixed. For most of you who have found high risk or critical risk access control violation vulnerabilities, you would have seen a sad face from the developer because it is sometimes I've seen cases where they had to go back at the architecture level, change the architecture, fix the vulnerability because that's how APIs are. APIs are wonderful. So yeah. And if you're a large organization, then I'm sure you would have uh, de enough developers for you to work on continuous deliver continuous integration and you can ask them to install these open source tools in the development lifecycle. This will save a lot of budget for you. And then you can ask your penetration testers to use this open source tool to save some time for them. This way, you can completely check off your external penetration testing, and you can you can probably save a lot of money by you know probably ignoring external penetration testing. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to kill anyone's business here. Uh, I'm I'm really sorry if you start hating me now, but I'm just trying to give you an example. 
And yeah, oh, oh yeah, it's 2016 being a bug hunter. If you are a penetration testing, I think you should start doing bug hunting. It's really cool. You would find really nice ways to find vulnerabilities and you would learn a lot. And if you're an organization and if you're thinking about starting a bug bounty program, I think you should definitely do it because it would benefit people like us and we, we will definitely have a smile on our face. But at the same time, you would, you would, uh, you would also be able to save a lot of money and then it's a, it's a really nice way to have uh, a lot of people looking at your code and finding vulnerabilities. And, uh, Oh yeah, uh, thanks a lot to UASP and all the developers slash security engineers who are trying to contribute this com to the community by releasing a lot of open source tools. Uh, like if you just go to UASP and type, uh, have a look for all the free tools that are available, I'm sure you would find a lot of tools. And this, this slide is probably dedicated to all those who have developed all these tools because they probably tend to spend their personal time and make, make the internet safer. So yeah, thanks a lot. And uh, thanks a lot for listening to us. Thanks a lot for listening to a few of our rants. And at the same time, all uh, did I forget the slide? Can you go to the next slide? Oh shit, I think I forgot the slide. Uh, oh yeah, this is the slide. I think I skipped this slide because it's it's been a 40 minute talk and I did not give you URLs to download these tools. So this, this is how it goes. Uh, Unfortunately, Google indexing is not working well. So if you go to Google and type Fuzzapi, or if you try for API Fuzzer, you might not get our tool in the first page, but we are hoping that you would be able to see it in the next one or two weeks, because we have made our reports public just at like 6.30 in the morning today, because we wanted to make it private since, uh, I mean, till, till we complete the talk. So yeah, this is, this is how it goes. And for queries, concerns, feedback, and rants, these are our Twitter IDs. Please, please don't publicly scold us, but then yeah, uh, feel free to drop us an email and feel free to create issues. We will try to resolve the issues and feel free to contribute the, to this tool if you feel it's, it's useful to you. Cause more people, if you, if you, if more the people, more is the better for the tool and more is the better for the industry. And that's it. No. Thanks a lot. Do you have any questions, please? Yeah. I'll repeat the question. So do you guys have it in your roadmap to use it as a zap extender or, I mean, uh, burp extender? Perfect question, because when we initially thought of uh, building this, we wanted to build it as a burp slash zap extender, but then then, then we thought of initially, uh, then we thought of going ahead, releasing it as an individual fuzzer, see the response from the crowd. If the crowd likes it, then it then it's probably easier for us to have it as an extender. Because as you know, burp has a huge line of, Use pipeline of uh, extensions. If someone wants to add an extension in Burp, it does take a bit of time. So we thought first we would reach out to the industry, see if they like it, see the feedback, and then go ahead and yeah, sure, definitely. So I heard you mention um, using workers. Um, maybe I missed it, but have you guys looked into doing any of those tasks asynchronously so you could run them faster? Uh, I'm sorry, can you be a bit loud? Uh, I said, I know you mentioned using workers for the yep. different checks. Have yep. you looked into doing any of that asynchronously? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so we do the process asynchronously uh, and just uh, do the long polling so that uh, we get the results immediately. So one, one small dumb thing I, I initially suggested Lalit when we were developing this tool is instead of, we thought of including the gem inside Fuzzapi instead of having a gem separately. But that ended up to be a very dumb idea. I'm really sorry. It wasted like two or three days of our time. So that's why we ended up having a gem separately and having a Fuzzapi in a different Git repo. Any integration with uh, Swagger? Uh, that's a very good question because Swagger is now widely being used across various companies. So we are looking forward to integrate it uh, it might take a bit of time, but yeah, sure, definitely. Yeah. How many different methods uh, are there? So we are looking for, we are just looking into the headers. That's it, as of now. But going forward, maybe if someone would like to help, then probably go ahead and add more checks. As of now, it's just the headers. I would like to add, uh, we also check the access token. So most of the APIs have the access token as a parameter. Uh, so if you pass the access token as a parameter, it, it creates a valid uh, session 
there and fuzzes on the inside part of the application. Um, have you considered a way to support uh, APIs that have more complex authorization schemes, like ones that hash part of the valid request within the authorization token? Yeah, we, we, we use, uh, we actually use authorization headers there. Uh, so when you pass the entire header, that particular header gets into the request and. Right, but what if it's passing your, passing your rehash to accept your, your buzz input as valid? Yeah, so this was a, this was like, one of the things that we spent a lot of time, but to be very fair, we were unsuccessful in doing it, considering the fact that it's more of a manual attack than something which could be automated. But then, yeah, sure, again, if someone could help it out, thumbs up, definitely. Any other questions? Let's give these guys another round of applause. Cool, thanks a lot.